Okay. Well, it is five o'clock. Uh, we're a uh, little small, tight-knit group uh, this evening. <laughs> Uh, maybe that will make for some robust, maybe a little more open discussion, or maybe we'll get out of here quick. We'll, of here quick. we'll <laughs> see. One of those two will happen. Um, um, wow. I don't. I don't actually recall those words. I know. I know. Um, but we're here, and it is after five. Um, I don't know of any prayer requests aside from what was mentioned this morning to pray for, other than I know Debbie was supposed to come home this afternoon. Uh, does anyone have any, like, word of confirmation that that did, in fact, happen? I mean, I'm assuming it did, uh, and we'll probably be uh, getting an update on the church uh, prayer page soon, so we want to be keeping them in prayer. But uh, let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll sing a bit and get into um, our discussion for this evening. Thank you, Father, for bringing us together this evening. We want to ask your blessings on this time of uh, worship, this time of study, this time of discussion. Uh, we pray you're glorified in it, and pray you'll go with us through the remainder of this week. Uh, we thank you that Sister Debbie is uh, home, as far as we know. Uh, bless her and Ernie as they transition back. Uh, watch over them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All uh, right. In keeping with humility, uh, I was talking this morning some about uh, at the heart of humility is having a, a, a real grasp of our relationship with God, understanding ourselves in relationship. So I thought a few songs that just turned our eyes upon him in praise would be appropriate. So first we'll sing, Lord, we come before thee now. <clears throat> Lord, we come before thee now. At thy feet we humbly bow. Oh, do not our suit disdain. Shall we seek thee, Lord, in vain? Shall we seek thee, Lord, in vain? Lord, on thee our souls depend. In compassion now descend, fill our hearts with thy rich grace, tune our lips to sing thy praise, tune our lips to sing thy praise, in thine own appointed way. Now we seek thee, here we stay. Lord, we know not how to go till our blessing thou bestow, till our blessing thou bestow. Grant that all may seek and find Thee, God, supremely kind. The sick, the captive free, let us all rejoice in Thee. Let us all rejoice in Thee. <clears throat> Next song will be Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Yeah. 
casting down their golden crowns around the crystal sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, who wast and art and evermore shalt be. song will be Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. <clears throat> Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, to my heart to sing Thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore Thee, May I still thy goodness prove, while the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace how great a debtor, Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Never let me wander from thee. Never leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so, we draw, drew our series on 1 Peter to a close today. Uh, in 1 Peter chapter 5, thinking about uh, what Peter writes about humility. And I'd like us to do uh, a couple things related to this. And actually, what I first wanted to do uh, is something I haven't done in a long time. That's actually, I want to recommend a book uh, to all of you. So this is a little book called Simply Humility uh, by a man named Gavin Ortland. Uh, Gavin Ortland is a Baptist uh, pastor. He's also uh, quite the academic, but this is not an academically oriented book. Um, simple little book on the topic of humility, 
and I read it not too long ago and found it a great encouragement. Uh, I felt like there was a lot of just great material here, great things to think about, very just refreshing to read. It was just like a breath of fresh air to read this little book, and it's very short. It's uh, not even 100 pages, uh, and, and some of what I said this morning, I, I drew inspiration from this book for some of it. So I'm going to leave it up here and want to encourage you to maybe take a look at it. If you would like to, to just take it, you're welcome to my copy. It would be great if I got it back one day, but if I didn't, it's okay. I'll be humble about it. Um, but you're welcome to my copy or you're welcome to, uh, to, to just look it up for yourself and you can probably purchase it for cheap. So a uh, great little book that I'd, I'd like to recommend. Um, <clears throat> something that we talked about this morning was distinguishing what humility is from what it isn't. And so there's some behavior that can look like humility, but it's not really. I uh, hope that was helpful to think about. Uh, but also we began by trying to not so much define humility, but just put our minds in a humble space, thinking to times where we have felt humble in, I think, the most biblical sense, where we weren't really thinking about ourselves at all. It's not that we had an especially low view of ourselves. It's not that we were being really hard on ourselves, but we were just so caught up in whatever we were seeing or doing or experiencing that we were not really thinking about ourselves. Uh, we were just in the present moment with whatever it was that was going on. Uh, and I mentioned just to some examples to try to stir some, some thought. Maybe it's something powerful in nature you saw or uh, a book you were reading or time with some close friends that was really meaningful. Um, but I thought it might be worthwhile to just share some, some of those moments. Um, does anyone have a moment that maybe came into your mind this morning or maybe that's come into your mind since then uh, that fits that description that maybe you'd like to share with the rest of us? Okay, so I've got two. Um, one is, I'll, yeah, I'll just give them both. One, um, this is, might sound a little cheesy, but I don't travel that much, so it, it's, it connects with me. Anytime I'm flying and I'm on a plane, uh, and especially if it's nighttime, you're flying over a big city, just the scale that I'm hit with, the sense of scale and how incredibly small the highways are and the cars are passing along and everything it makes me realize all these people have their own little world and there's so many things that are so important to them in that little world and they're all just little specks moving around for my for my altitude and it makes me think about my own little world and how small it really is and it it really helps balance things put things in perspective and i really kind of forget about my own troubles and my own worries which enables me to live more humbly, right? Live not thinking about myself so I can better have the mind of Christ that Paul talks about in Philippians 2, uh, emptying, you know, I'm more equipped to empty myself for others uh, that way. Uh, another one is um, actually something that Kelsey's mom was sharing today. We were talking, and it's one that Kelsey and I both can definitely resonate with as well because we were all there for it. Uh, it's when Luke was born. Uh, that was just such a powerful, amazing moment after, you know, a long, difficult labor for Kelsey, and we're all uh, stressed and anxious but excited, and uh, just the, the beauty of that moment of uh, welcoming him into the world, I think, was uh, another one that kind of fits that description. So those are two examples of mine, Bob, if that maybe stirs some thought. Absolutely. So, so, yeah, I mean, difficult things that we're going through or that we're along, journeying along with someone who's going through a hard thing, those things can certainly humble us. Anyone else? Well, 
Well, if not, let me encourage you to just think about that some on your own. Uh, because the more and more moments we have, and they don't always have to be like these life-changing moments like when a child is born. The more and more little moments where we're struck by something uh, that is ultimately from God uh, and we're totally taken, our focus is totally taken off ourselves, the more and more we can certainly grow in, in uh, humility. Yeah. Yeah. passage we're going to read in a little bit um, is, is basically a poetic way of saying yes, that he would be there, which is so powerful to think about. Uh, along those lines, Luann, this, that reminded me of something that I saw once before years ago. It's been years since I've ever seen it, but this book mentioned it and reminded me of it when I read it as well. Uh, you should be able to find this on YouTube super easily, and it's a short, I think it's like a 12-minute video. Just search or on Google or YouTube, I think if you just search like if the earth were the size of a golf ball or something like that, it's this video where you start with the earth and you keep zooming out and compare it to the size of our sun and other suns and these gas giants. And the point is by the end, like your mind is supposed to be thoroughly just blown away uh, with the exact same thing you're talking about, Luann. And that's certainly... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is that. It's like we're, we're living on the little leaf, you know, uh, the little bubble on the leaf, um, it truly is a humbling thing to see. And humbling in the best way. I don't mean in the way that we're filled with shame, but we're filled with awe at, at how incredible this universe is and therefore how incredible God is, which really is a, a um, refreshing form of, refreshing dose of humility. All right. Well, again, humility is something that we can do uh, well, it's something that we cannot do while we're focusing on ourselves, uh, in a sense, which is why I uh, was trying to direct us this morning to think of moments where we're not thinking about ourselves at all. Uh, humility is one of those things where you can only grow so much if you're walking through the day telling yourself, like, be more humble, be more, because the more you're doing that, the, the more the focus is on you, which means it's not outward, which uh, makes it rather hard. Uh, so uh, it's a lot easier when our focus just shifts entirely. Um, on to something else. And of course, there's no greater place to turn our eyes, and we're all called to turn our eyes upon God. Uh, Chris just led us this morning and turn your eyes upon Jesus, and that's, that's really what it's all about. Uh, so what I wanted us to do for the remainder of our time is uh, I selected a, a few passages, three, that really, if we really dwell on these words, they will, I think, direct our minds towards God and towards various aspects of who he is, what he has done, his character, his kindness towards us. And I want to encourage you, some of these passages, maybe you've just read recently in your own time, uh, but just really try to soak in the words and uh, maybe just meditate, reflect on them as we read them. They're kind of lengthy, uh, but uh, they're just especially uh, powerful passages. So I, I've asked uh, Jason and Chris to read a couple of them. I'm going to read one as well. So again, they're a little longer. Uh, but let me just encourage you to sit back, settle in, and just focus on these uh, really beautiful and, and I hope um, empowering portions of Scripture. So our first one, uh, Jason, I know you're up first. Let me get you the microphone. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with the steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your, your youth is renewed like the eagles. 
The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, and so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like the flowers of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to his children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established this throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over us. Bless the Lord, O you, his angels, you mighty ones who do his word. Obeying the voice of his word, bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord. All his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Our second passage, um, I'll be reading this one for us. This is from the book of Revelation. Uh, this is, I think, one of the most beautiful portions in all of Scripture. Revelation can really intimidate us. Uh, and confuse us, I know. Uh, and sometimes we can get especially hung up on a lot of the symbolism, wondering, all right, what does this specific image mean? What does it correspond to? How do I properly interpret it? Uh, th there's a time and place for all that. I just want to encourage you right now, don't try to do any of that in what we read. Don't, try to, don't get hung up on what specific things mean. Try to let the whole force of this beautiful, powerful description of uh, the throne room of heaven, uh, let it just... Um, and just try to focus on that instead. So this is Revelation chapters 4 and 5. After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven, with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance, had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders, clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder, and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with uh, six wings, are full of eyes all around and within, and day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures <clears throat> give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. 
And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked, and behold, then, then I looked, and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth uh, and in the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. I love those two chapters, especially uh, in the context of thinking about humility, to think about what it would be like to be part of this. Um, And there's a sense in which we are called to be part of it. Uh, John hears every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth. That should include us. Uh, We should live lives in such a way that we're constantly declaring the things that are declared uh, in these chapters. And uh, it's our great hope and expectation to do that in God's presence forever when Jesus returns. Our last passage is uh, from Psalm 139. Uh, Chris is going to read this uh, in just a moment. Uh, Psalm 139 is an extremely powerful passage that, on the one hand, might not seem to fit with humility because it's actually all about us, uh, but it's all about actually how much God deeply loves and cares for us. And the more more we internalize that, uh, the more and more we can truly walk in humility. Uh, So Chris is going to read this. There are a few verses Just for transparency's sake, we're going to skip over in this psalm uh, because there's a section in here that is important and in a different context would be totally worth our study. It's about um, God and his enemies, and and the writer of the psalm is saying some things about God's enemies, but it doesn't really fit our purposes for tonight. So we're going to skip those verses, and otherwise we're going to read this. Uh, This is Psalm 139. Uh, Chris is going to read this, and after that we'll be uh, dismissed with a word of prayer. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light shall and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day. For darkness is as light with you. For you inform, you form my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful for all your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed sub- substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me. Yet, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! 
if, if I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake, and I'm still with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Let's pray. Father God, we want to give you thanks for bringing us together uh, this evening. We want to give you thanks for the blessing of your word. Uh, we want to give you thanks that you are truly our creator and redeemer, uh, and that you are truly worthy of all praise and glory. Uh, we want to pray that you'll bless us through this week, help us to learn more fully how to walk in uh, humility, help us to keep our eyes trained on you, to keep our eyes trained on Jesus, the ultimate example of humility as he uh, came to earth on our behalf and went to the cross on our behalf. And, and just as you have promised to exalt all who bow before you in humility, uh, you've exalted Christ to your right hand. Father, help us to, um, to truly embody this, uh, this quality uh, of your Son, uh, this uh, teaching that Peter gave us in 1 Peter chapter 5. Keep our eyes trained on you, and may we trust you to fully take care of us. Uh, bless us as we go from here. In Jesus' name, amen.